Oh, hello in there. Welcome to the channel, fellow YouTubians. We are back on the 52 barn door ambulance. You can hear the ultrasonic cleaner doing its thing on the heads at the moment. We've got the heads in there cleaning up. We've got a whole box full of stuff here that we're going to have to clean. So, mate, I'm going to have to put an apron on soon. Uh, here's the motor. And in the last episode, links in the description, if you haven't seen it, we started tearing this sucker apart. This is a... 25 horsepower motor which came with the ambulance and anyway this thing here is seized we're trying to pull it apart i have put some at fluid some wd-40 i've let it soak overnight and i'm just trying to get the cylinders out the pushrod tubes are not having it two of them or three of them sorry are seized in there i have remnants of the other ones out already you can see here these two here decided to come out no problem these ones did not these ones have all pretty much just fallen into pieces so they've got this i reckon this must be bakelite or something like it but there's a rod internally inside them and of course unfortunately this one's broken so we're going to have to get uh new push, push rub tubes anyway because i think these are all pretty worn and yeah i don't know you can buy those so it's not that big of a deal anyway uh, what, yeah, we've just been soaking, 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 and I'm just playing with this one, uh, trying to release the cylinder. It's not having any part of it. Uh, I've soaked, soaked, soaked. I have started to tap this one. It, you can see just down there, we do have a little bit of a gap, so it's working. And my ch tools of choice are the nylon hammer just to whack it either side to try and free it up and also I've just been using one of these little pry bars now there is a spot for it right there and there's a nice big chunky bit of metal it's not on the fin uh, and you can just give it a bit of a pry pry either side and we are slowly moving it so we're going to continue hopefully we can get this thing apart distributor is not having any part of wanting to come out that's seized solid in there Anyway, let's uh, see if we can get at least one of these cylinders out and see what's going on. Okay, after a lot of whacking, I think we're out. Yes. Woohoo! Right, let's have a quick look at this guy. I'm really interesting to, interested to see what the inside of it's like. I'll tell you what. Not too bad. They might be able to be used. I'll have to run it by Oven Boy because he is the engine expert. I am not. But looking at. Oh, hello in there. Uh, yeah, looking. At, I don't see any deep scratches or. I mean, there's a little bit of. A little bit of pitting just there, but that might just be muck. Well, um, that's a good sign. Piston is in one piece well, that's a good sign too okay we got one out woohoo we've got three to go and that took uh just to pull this one off that was probably an hour and a half of just tapping back and forth back and forth back and forth so it's not a slow process and you can see the case has actually started to split in half too i've stopped it I'll put a bolt back in because I didn't want the thing to fall apart. Yeah, let's see how we go now if we can release this second uh, cylinder. Two thousand years later. Okay, so we've got 
three jugs off. We've got one more to go. And I'm just going to leave it now because I can actually split the case. It's actually separated from all the tapping and banging and everything. So let's uh, see how we go here. I think I might even just be able to move, take this whole top off. Let's have a go. Righto guys, so what I've had to do, um, obviously normally with these cases you've got to take the gudgeon pin out and take a, a pit, the pistons off before you can release the case because there's interferences. These suckers are rusted solid so they're not coming out. So I've had to do the next best thing. Um, I just called Oven Boy up and he said look just undo the bloody Conrod bolts which I've done on these two. So they're just swinging but they're not going to come out because again they won't fit. But at least they're loose now. I should be able to get this case apart. So fingers crossed. We're just going to pop these in like that and try and pull the case up. And yeah, hopefully. Now, what I found, here we go. Done. Let's pop this over here. What I discovered is the, don't, don't mind the sockets that have fallen in here. Yeah, the problem was nothing to do with the pistons. It was the lifters. So the lifters have, have, have actually seized. Um, and obviously that was stopping the camshaft from, from moving. So there's the cam. And let's just get a rag here and we'll give this a bit of a clean up. Then we can a bit of a look at that. All I'm concerned about is the wear on these lobes and whether or not you know, we can reuse this part because this is the part we want. And, you know, that looks pretty damn good to me. I don't see any scoring or any damage to it. So I think we are on a winner here. I think that is good. So that's one bonus that will get cleaned up in the ultrasonic. Those lobes look good. So we'll pop that aside. The other thing of concern now will be, I'll just bring you guys a bit closer. Two hours later. I decided to come out here after dinner tonight. It's, uh, what is it, eight o'clock? I just, I, I was too excited. I just wanted to come out and have a, and get this thing apart. So, you know what? I think this case is savable too. Yeah, I reckon we're on a winner. Yeah. No. Obviously we'll be changing big end bearings, but this case is looking, yeah. So here's, here's the problem. The lifters here are seized. So the lifter, I'm going to buy a new set of lifters anyway. There's a little bit of corrosion inside the case here, but nothing, nothing crazily bad. So I think we've dodged a bullet with this. I'm going to pull the, uh, the, the crank out and then I just want to make sure before I forget, uh, just put the conrods back together. So five seconds. Okay, the aftermath. Uh, pulled it off the stands. Got obviously our big problem we've got at the moment is the gudgeon pins will not come out on any of the pistons so you can't get them out they're basically stuck in the block because you can't they won't clear to go out through this way so my only hope now because obviously i want to use conrods and the pistons i think they're all good i don't think there's anything wrong with not using them we'll have a closer inspection but i think what i'm going to have to do is soak these guys in the ultrasonic just to see if we can get those uh, pins to loosen up and then we can drive them out and then obviously separate the conrods from the pistons and then we can start the cleaning process. But the crank, I had a good look at the crank. It's up here on the table and it's not bad. I, I think, again, you know, I mean, I'm no crazy expert, but I know when they're really crazily worn and they don't look bad at all. I know um, Oven Boy will have a better, a better idea because he is the engine builder. You know, those surfaces there look pretty damn good. I don't see any scoring or discoloration. So I think I think this bearing, yeah, obviously we'll, we'll buy new bearings, um, but these, like even that surface there, looks pretty good. Okay, I'm not gonna play with it too much because we don't wanna scratch it up. So yeah, that's looking really promising. And you know what, we're gonna have a second case. I think that thing will clean up just as good as this one. We'll see how we go. Might even be a cool little feature. Well, I think that's going to do it for tonight. I will catch you guys in the morning. Man, did this create a mess, eh? <laughs> Heads, they've gone through the ultrasonic a couple of times. And they're looking really good. Um, 
no real problems with these, no cracks on them. Fins are all good. We will take the valves out. Again, I'll have to do that up at Paul's place because I don't have the tool to, to take these off. So all in all, we're looking pretty good. What I've done so far, I've just dunked this part of the engine in the solution just to see if we can free up these gudgeon pins and get them knocked out because they're probably savable and i think the case is actually savable too i don't think that you know there's no markings there's no fretting here on this on the between the studs all the surfaces are actually good so we're going to clean that case up like the other one and then we can have uh, have another one ready to go obviously all those parts in there need really really good clean i'm going to go and get some more solution go from there so let's start getting some stuff cleaned up two hours later Okay, so another day of cleaning bits and pieces. We put the Solex Carby in the ultrasonic. We've also cleaned up the camshaft and the lobes look very good on that, no issues. And of course we have also done the pistons. You can see here I just gave those a very, very fine glass bead. We got the gudgeon pins out after, uh, and you can see I've actually get, given those a polish up on the linisher and Conrod's as well. They come up great. No slop in this uh, this bush here, which is fantastic. Uh, I did a little test on those. So yeah, they're all done. Obviously, we've got. I had to do a big order last night, and we had to get new lifters. These are shot, unfortunately. Some of them are broken. So uh, we've got new big end bearings. We've got a few other bits and pieces as well. We started cleaning up the tinware. This stuff, I've just been using this tub here and putting degreaser in it, but that degreaser there, I bought it's absolute rubbish. It just I don't know, it just does not seem to take anything off them. The cases have gone through the ultrasonic a few times and you can see this one's got a little bit of corrosion inside here, but it's still good. Uh, once that all gets uh, blasted back, we'll uh, have another case to play with, which is fantastic. And also we have done the barrels and the barrels, these came up really nice. You can see there, I gave those a sandblast on the outside and painted painted them with heat proof black and they are going to do get a hone just a very light hone there's no deep scratches in them which is which is good so you can't buy these so we have to reuse them no matter what and crankshafts out i've just been pressing some parts we've taken that one off unfortunately this one here i can't get that off with my uh, puller that i've got it won't get underneath here under the lip so I've got to devise a different method of pulling this gear off which will probably use my little press actually we might try that now see if I can set it up over here with the press this place is really starting to get busy I've got stuff everywhere we've got to I've got to try and move move some stuff out of here it's just getting a, like a tripping hazard every five seconds so let's see if we can get that gear off and uh, set this thing up well unfortunately i couldn't get the gear off <laughs> so the crankshaft is now in the car ready to go up the oven boy's place because he's got the right tool so that's one job i've just have to shell for now i did start playing around with the distributor and just it had gunk all over it so i've given it a bit of a clean up we're going to strip it inside just make sure all the components are working the original strainer which i want to use that again because it's factory right it's a good idea and we have got some bad news unfortunately with the, this uh, case as I as you can see here I've spent pretty much a whole day cleaning both sides of this but unfortunately we've got two holes very very sl small pin holes but there is one run just there and there is also one just there and you can actually if I put it up to the light you can see <laughs> you can see light through it god damn it <laughs> so yeah unfortunately it must have been left here with a lot of a lot of you know a little layer of water inside and it's corroded however we are going to save this case because these are very very hard to get and i have ordered some special magnesium rods and we are going to fill this back up with weld i didn't even know you could weld magnesium i thought it just goes boom up in flames but apparently it doesn't when you're using a tig welder and you've got the argon gas creating a shield it will not actually ignite so i've watched a few youtube videos from the late mr tig and yeah, you can weld it just the same as alloy. So I've ordered some specialized rods and we are going to fill this area here up. And same on that one there. 
we've got a couple of fills we've got to do you know we'll have another case i mean the the cam surface here where the bearing or where the cam runs on is is good everything else is not bad so yeah if we can fill up these little two spots uh, I will make a video on that because I didn't see anything on YouTube about actually about welding uh, one of these V-dub cases. So yeah, that's going to come down the track and we'll go from there. Obviously, we have got this thing uh, blasted on the outside as well. So you can see there, I've given that a go through the sandblasting machine. So one of the other things we're going to do uh, is the spindles. I do have all the new bushes so we can get those pressed apart and that will be in a, you know, upcoming video as well but i think it's getting late it's time for dinner i will leave this video where it is now we're getting in there slowly it's just you know little bits and pieces that take time to clean and you know i've still got this pile of junk here that needs to be sandblasted and cleaned and this thing here is starting to play up a little bit i've got an, an issue with the voltage we're getting a little bit of a voltage drop with one of the motors so it's starting to oscillate and carry on so I don't know if there's a way to fix it, but it's just getting a little bit annoying when I'm sandblasting at the moment. It keeps turning itself off, so I've got to get that thing looked at. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining us on this episode. We'll catch you in the next one. And thanks again for the new subscribers. And don't forget to comment and like and share. Cheers, guys. Woo.